So this is a really great question, and I'm glad you asked it because I wish we were just better at explaining this to our own people here in the United States. But there are three reasons for this. One of the reasons is um, makes a lot of sense from a security standpoint. One of the reasons is an economic reason, and the other reason is just it's morally right. And so the first reason, and I'll talk the morally right is kind of all encompassing throughout and we'll all wrap it up at the end. But the first reason is from a security standpoint, ensuring that Russia is stopped in Ukraine actually provides for the security of the United States. The reason is, is we have treaties, we have allies, we have families and friends and brothers within Europe that we absolutely, if Russia were to invade a country that is in NATO, we would stand up and fight again in the European theater like we did twice before not counting like the Yugoslav wars and Kosovo and stuff like that, but more like the world, world wars. We would do that again. Americans show up when it comes to that uh, level of um, commitment to our allies and partners and friends in countries like Europe. So we just, that's the first reason is we do not want Americans dying in the European theater again, fighting a European war because we would go. And we would be there to fight alongside y'all to beat back Russia like we had before, although it was Germany, obviously, before. But anyways, moving forward, we have done so. We have secured our uh, the European theater, so to speak, the European continent, not only by just being the supreme military globally and basically telling everyone to get along uh, that we're former foes, we also have stationed our troops there to ensure that security is maintained. And those troops have shifted and ebbed and flowed from Germany, and now they're looking to be placed in Poland and places like Drosko Pomorski or in Cinco in Romania, or uh, Baltic nations are asking for troops as well, and we've done training events there. So that we secure the European theater before Americans have to go and, do, and secure it in war. The second reason and this is the more cynical reason that i'm sure many of the russian supporters are going to latch on to is it provides an avenue of strong economics for the united states our and i i, I promise you this wasn't the first reason the united states went to help ukraine we are helping ukraine because it is the right thing to do and i'll talk about that next but the economics behind what is happening is going to create a windfall for the United States going forward, both in countries like Germany or uh, the Baltic nations or Poland purchasing U.S. made equipment because the U.S., if there's one thing you can say about the U.S., we're very good at making weaponry, and especially weapons of war. A lot of people argue that's not necessarily a good thing, but this is the world we live in. So the reality is, is countries like Poland are buying tanks from the U.S., Germany's buying F-35s. It also is causing a shift in thought globally where India is now looking at how poorly Russia is performing. And they're going, we're probably not going to buy aircraft from Russia anymore. And they're actually in talks right now to potentially purchase F-35s from the United States. So the economics behind the supply chains to continue to maintain that and trade creates partnerships, trade creates security. And that's a large reason why the United States after World War II underwrote global security with our massive Navy so that we could foster trade and create partner, a web of partnerships. Our, the U.S.'s power is not necessarily derived from the fact that we can kill so many people is derived from the fact that we are connected everywhere and we influence everywhere through soft power and that is something that we maintain by supporting countries like ukraine and we get a uh a financial kickback from that by countries saying we're gonna buy u.s stuff because they're good people and they are going to provide when necessary they're going to continue to be stable and secure whereas russia is somewhat collapsing and their their supply chains are unreliable or even they're sanctioned etc so we get that benefit as well and then the final benefit and the most important benefit and i touched on this a little bit earlier is it is it's just the right thing to do say what you will about americans they show up and i'll give a couple examples when Japan had the massive earthquake and the Fukushima plant went down. We parked our hospital ships 
off the coast and helped as much as we could. When that happened in New Zealand, the same. When, when uh, another really fascinating thing, look up the earthquake in Iran, and I think it was in the early 2000s, like 2003 or something, the, there was a massive earthquake in Iran, and the U.S. quietly went to the Iranian government and said, do you need help? The Iranian government turned down the United States and said, we don't need help. The U.S. said, okay. A, couple, a day or so later, I don't know what the timeline is exactly, but a day or so later, the U.S. came back and said, hey, are you sure? A lot of people are dying. There's a lot of problems here. Do you need help from the U.S.? The U.S. or Iran said no. Eventually, a few days after that, Iran came to the U.S. and said, yes, we will take your aid. We will take your help. But can you do it discreetly? So U.S. airmen took duct tape and duct taped over all of the American symbols on C-130s and C-1 or C-17s and delivered aid from USAID, the U.S. Agency for International Development, landing, covering up all of the the badging that showed that it was American. Soldiers didn't have uniforms on, and they provided aid to Iran quietly. That's a story not a lot of people know, but you can actually Google it. It came out later on, and it's now confirmed by the Iranian government. It provides goodwill for us. We get a, a modicum of, of goodwill globally when we help the people who have the righteous cause. And so the U.S. always tends to step up in natural disasters because, first and foremost, it's the right thing to do, but also we have goodwill and that we can say, hey, we're not terrible people. We're trying to help you. We're, we're not here to conquer the world, even though we are the most powerful country in the history of the world. We're not here to do that. We're here to help. We're here to provide stability with our Navy. We're here to do business. And when you have some problem, so long as you are like righteous in your ideas and what you want to do, we will come to your aid. And even if that's a perceived enemy with, with regard to Iran. And actually that goodwill bought a lot of the, the return on the nuclear deal that lasted for something like 15 years through the Bush and Obama administration before uh, Trump pulled out of it So with, with the Iranians. So it's just a good thing to do. It buys goodwill for the, the U.S. It's American people are charitable. We are very charitable. So we tend to help other countries and Ukraine is a country in need right now. So we are willing to help. And I'm kind of rambling now, but those are the three overarching reasons for the U.S. helping. It's going to, in the future, ensure the security of our European brothers and sisters so that we aren't fighting over there. It's going to make us money in the long run with our through our military um, sales and supply chains. And again, it's just the right thing to do. So... If there's other reasons, there probably are, I'm sure, sub-reasons, but that's just my little chat for eight minutes now.